Hello there Star Wars fans and welcome back to another RebelScum.com reaction video to the most recent Star Wars fan stream. So our good friends over at Hasbro on the Star Wars team went live very recently and talked about some exciting upcoming new figures that are soon to be released and up for pre-order for the Vintage Collection, Black Series, and the Black Series Roleplay line as well as upcoming figures in the Vintage Collection and Black Series 6 inch scale toy line and they even dropped news that not may 4th the day specifically but the week of may 4th they have plans to announce the next star wars has lab project and they officially said it's going to be another vc project now i know black series six inch scale fans and role play fans may not be the most excited to hear that news that it's another vc project but to be fair the VC projects have consistently done well with awesome success from the fans with some really cool, awesome pieces and vehicles. And unfortunately, while the Rancor was a bust, hopefully they have some upcoming Black Series 6 inch scale Haslabs in mind because honestly, we could probably sit around and throw all kinds of awesome, really good Haslab ideas around that they could do in the future. So maybe we'll do that. So stay tuned for a potential Black Series HasLab wish list video and stay tuned. But anyway, on for today's reveals, starting with the Vintage Collection. So they made a point to say piggybacking off of last week's reveals, which of course were the new Stormtrooper on classic Star Wars card, which is apparently a re-release of VC-231 and a new Vader mold on classic Star Wars card, those are very, very nice updates to my classic OT fans out there because honestly, we have needed a regular retail release for a classic original trilogy Stormtrooper. And this is the proper Stormtrooper mold with the holster on the hip for his E-11 blaster rifle. So already we've got that really awesome current VC mold for the Imperial Stormtroopers with the proper holster on the figure and of course it's going to be on that awesome star wars card that figure is already up for pre-order now and has been up for pre-order for about a week now as well as the vader that vader it needed an update so bad i mean we've had vader on a star wars card in the past in the vc and honestly he has been sore for an update maybe not as much if you're a carded collector but if you're a loose collector and you've wanted a really nice new Hope Vader in three three quarter scale, well, guess what? You got a really nice one coming. And then, of course, we also had the Night Trooper four pack featuring three unique Night Troopers from the Ahsoka series and Enoch. Now, as awesome as that four pack is and as great value as that is for loose collectors, hopefully Hasbro has plans for a carded version of Enoch at some point in the future because well he's such an awesome and unique character that i definitely want to see him on his own card back at some point in the future especially for those carded collectors because i know some of them feel a little gypped that their enoch is coming in a printed box and they don't actually get to see the figure and display him with the rest of the vc so fingers crossed that enoch is coming in that packaging in the future following up with vc today they revealed a new classic Star Wars card, Leia, and this Leia is gorgeous. Now, you guys know that I'm all for cloth goods. Cloth goods are superior, and honestly, while they said that it was a little hard getting the little wrinkles and ruffles in the dress by going the cloth goods route, is it possible? Yes. Would it be expensive to get that effect in there for a small 3 3 quarter figure? Probably more so than it would for the molded plastic. And honestly, the molded plastic looks really good on that figure. But that face sculpt, oh my gosh, that face sculpt was absolutely killer. Fantastic job on that new Leia Hasbro. She looks gorgeous. Speaking of classic Star Wars, we got another figure coming out soon. This will also be mainline just like Leia in case I haven't mentioned that yet. But Hasbro definitely mentioned it in their live stream today. We're getting a nice, clean R2-D2 for classic Star Wars card this time. We have had a Star Wars carded R2 release a couple of years back, which was the first time in the Vintage Collection he got released on a just Star Wars card. But this time, he won't be dirty. He won't have the little droid restraining bolt on the canister. It'll be a nice, 
clean R2 based off of his appearance in classic Star Wars, which is another fantastic release. Also in VC, we have the new Jedi Master Soul, one of the main characters from the upcoming Star Wars The Acolyte, which we recently just got our new trailer for that. I personally am very, very excited for the Acolyte series, mostly because it's finally an on-screen take on the High Republic era, which is still, while a couple of years old now, very new to Star Wars fans as an era, and so far has only had coverage in print, both in novels and comic books mostly. We got a little bit of content in the Jedi Survivor video game, but as far as just sit down and watch on screen content, there's been next to nothing for Star Wars The High Republic, unless you want to include the kiddie show, Young Jedi Adventures, which, believe it or not, is not a bad watch. I actually kind of dig Young Jedi Adventures. I don't know if you can tell from the figures behind me in the corner over here, but they're on display with my Black Series, because honestly, it's probably the closest thing we're going to get to Black Series Young Jedi Adventure characters, and they're close enough to six-inch scale anyway. So, nice to get an actual serious Star Wars show for the High Republic era. I'm very excited for that. So we're getting Jedi Master Soul in the VC, and then we're getting another character from the Acolyte in VC, and that is May the Assassin. Now, she also appeared in the trailer and so far seems to be the main antagonist or at least an antagonist into the new the Acolyte series. Looking forward to seeing more of that character and what she's like. And while that does kind of do it for the reveals that went up for pre-order this week, there were also some pipeline figures, and those include the Jetpack Trooper from Jedi Survivor slash Jedi Fallen Order. Now, if you've seen it in other stuff, you might know it as the Rocket Trooper from Star Wars Battlefront 2. You might know it as the Imperial Jump Trooper from Star Wars Rebels, you might know it by another name from some other thing in Star Wars because Lucasfilm just can't seem to decide what the name of this trooper is, much like the Death Squad Commander back in the original trilogy. Next up, they also revealed the Ahsoka live-action version of Grand Admiral Thrawn for the Vintage Collection, so now we will soon have Thrawn for both Black Series and VC in the near future. They announced another Army Builder pack. This time we're getting some X-Wing pilots for the Rebellion. Those will be very cool. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what kind of unique face sculpts they go with for that. They didn't say which pilots specifically. I think they might have even said that they'll probably be generic pilots, which honestly, new unique pilots for X-Wings? I'm all for that. That sounds pretty cool to me. Long overdue next is The Mandalorian and The Blurg. We're going all the way back to the first episode, they said. All the way back to season one of The Mandalorian with this one. We're getting a Blurg soon. Hopefully, there's one coming for Black Series 6 in scale at some point in the future as well. Because I definitely want a Blurg for my collection. And last but not least, we're getting another Diorama playset. Much like the Tantive 4 hallway from A New Hope, we're getting the hallway diorama playset of Moff Gideon's Light Cruiser. Now, this playset, they said, is going to come with a Mandalorian Night Owl Trooper of some kind, rather than some kind of Imperial Trooper. Honestly, while that is a good choice for the Light Cruiser, considering the Mandalorians used the Light Cruiser after they took it from Moff Gideon at the end of Season 2, Aliyah Kane would have been a really good character to release with that, especially in her Imperial Officer's uniform from when she was working on the bridge of Moff Gideon's Light Cruiser. But who knows, maybe we'll see an Aliyah Kane figure at some point in the future of VC and or Black Series 6 in scale. Speaking of Black Series, it's time to move on next to the Black Series 6-inch scale. And they kicked it off with the Holocom Darth Maul. Now, this is a Holocom take on the old master version of the Darth Maul Black Series 6-inch scale figure. And they even went out of their way to change it from a bounty. So Holocom doesn't necessarily mean bounty anymore. It can be applied to many other characters, which kind of got my mind racing a little bit because they changed the little saying to 
Await the Dawn, which is a common Crimson Dawn phrase, more seen in the comics than in anything else, really, but still a really cool addition to that. We get Darth Maul in a stylization kind of similar to how he appeared in Solo when he was in charge of the Crimson Dawn Crime Syndicate. And I'm actually genuinely excited for that in addition to the other, other Holocom figures. While we haven't necessarily posted a Holocom review yet, which we will be soon in the next couple weeks or so, the Holocom figures are actually very, very cool. And having the light up puck base to go with them, I thought was a very nice touch. So stay tuned for that when we review those figures. Moving on, we also had five, five Black Series reveals for the upcoming Star Wars The Acolyte series. They are going in hard for Black Series six inch collectors. Although hopefully we get a lot more VC characters announced very soon too, because so far two of these five were announced for VC and that includes Jedi Master Soul and the Assassin May. But we also get Jedi Padawan Jackie Lon, Jedi Knight Yord Fondar, and last but not least, we also have Jedi Master Indara, played by Carrie Ann Moss, which is really cool and exciting, considering some of her co-stars from The Matrix during the time of the filming of The Matrix's sequel film were also working on the prequels in Star Wars, which that's pretty cool and exciting. Now she's made her way over to Star Wars and joined the Star Wars family. Also as a Jedi, I might add. The, the other two characters were also a Jedi. I believe that was uh, Kit Fisto and Sicy Ten, I think, who played the, uh, the, the Dreadlock ghosts from The Matrix 2. Fun fact, in case you didn't know. And real quick, before we talk about the exciting new packaging, one little designer note that I heard today is the belts on the Acolyte figures are different. In case they look similar, they're not. It is a different shade of brown on each different belt, which is a kind of nice little thing to know. Now, speaking of design slash design changes, we got to talk about the new packaging for Black Series 6 inch scale. I love it. I really like it a lot. Honestly, it's probably what phase four should have been from the very beginning, but you know what they say about hindsight, you live and you learn. And Hasbro is definitely living and learning. They lived and they learned when they took away the bubbles for Black Series and fans didn't like that, so they brought them back. Well, they also know we don't necessarily like that angle on the side of the packaging so much. And I gotta say, I really love that new packaging, whatever you wanna call it, whether it's 4.5, which honestly I would argue is technically the windowless box packaging they did during phase four. So that would mean this is either phase five or 4.75. We wanna put that right there because it's still continuing off of the numbered set of phase four, by the way. So this isn't, they're not cutting it off. They're not starting a new set of numbers. This is a continuation of the numbered sets that you started collecting with phase four for you sealed collectors out there. So this will continue that banner artwork that you've been building through phase four of the black series or 4.5, whatever you want to call it with this new packaging style. And the other thing I like about it is it seems to combine the best elements of the phase three packaging and the phase four packaging where we're getting that nice black box style like we got with phase one, two, and three, but it looks more like phase three to me with that inner background color per the color scheme of whatever the show or movie is in black series, which I really like. You have the number on the front of the box, which is something that's been driving me crazy for ages since phase three started is not having the number on the front of the box. Yes, the number can go on the side. Yes, it can go on the back. But sometimes when I'm trying to figure out who is who or, oh man, I just don't remember where they fell and not knowing which number is which and having to look for an image or go through my collection or go through Collector's Oracle just to figure out what that number is. It's just a few more extra seconds of headache that annoys me. So having that number just below the name on the front, I think is really nice and a great 
great positive change for the packaging. Plus, we still have that side banner profile art. It's just not at a weird angle anymore. Now it's just a flat facing surface to the box. So you don't have to stagger your figures in an interesting and creative way to display the whole thing. You can just line them up if you want to display that mural art. And I think it looks really, really good. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like anything could be changed about the other phase four figures that were previously released, unless Hasbro just has plans to re-release absolutely everything from the past few years, which somehow I doubt in that updated packaging, but it is still a nice and positive change. I think the packaging, in my opinion, looks much, much better. And it feels nice like Black Series again. Seeing that nice black facing just makes it look more like a collectible than just a regular action figure toy like the Phase 4 packaging kind of did. Anyway, I love the new packaging. Let's talk about pipelines next. And a lot of really exciting stuff got pipeline for Black Series 6 inch scale collectors as well. First off, they started with an Andor character and a really awesome Andor character. We're getting the ISB agent Deidre finally in Black Series 6 inch scale. And hopefully with that pipeline reveal, she's not far behind for VC because there's still a lot of other Andor characters that we got in Black Series 6 inch scale so far that we still have not gotten announced for VC. So hopefully our VC fans are going to have a Deidre at some point in the near future as well. But moving on from Andor, another really exciting trooper that I know we're all very, very much itching to have in 6 inch scale and hopefully is also coming out in 3 3 quarter very, very soon. We have what Hasbro's calling the Imperial Armored Commando or Mandalorian Super Commando or Moff Gideon's Mandalorian Troopers or Imperial Mando Super Commandos, whatever you want to call them. Those super awesome Imperial Mandalorian Troopers from Season 3 of The Mandalorian are getting a figure very, very soon in the Black Series. Now, it probably won't be out in time for Rebel Scum Con 2024, but Mr. Paul Darnell, who played Maroc in the Ahsoka series, also played one of these Troopers and one of the Praetorian Guards in Season 3 of The Mandalorian, in case you didn't know. Also up for Pipeline today was Ahsoka the White, or rather Ahsoka Tano in the white outfit she wears towards the end of the Ahsoka series. In addition to that, we're getting two more Ahsoka characters in a two-pack this time. Black Series collectors will also be getting their own Captain Enoch very, very soon in a two-pack with an Imperial Night Trooper. We don't know which Imperial Night Trooper yet, as we know there were many, many different looks to the Imperial Night Troopers because they all had to fix their armor in unique and different ways because they all broke in unique and different ways. So those of you who have been making your own custom Night Troopers at home, who knows? Maybe you've done this one, maybe you haven't, but stay tuned because he comes with Enoch himself and that one they said will be a Walmart exclusive. And last but not least, they also pipelined another one of those awesome clone and Jedi two packs featuring Master Yoda and a clone commander Gree based off of his appearance in the comics. And it looks to me like his phase two 41st trooper gear. Because in phase one, he was part of the 41st, not the 442nd. Which I'm pretty excited for because we didn't really get to see much of Gree after he was done doing phase one stuff in the Clone Wars series. And for that matter, there was a lot of awesome clone commanders we didn't get to see a lot of throughout the Clone Wars series after their phase one. So who knows? Maybe there's room for Dave Filoni to do more Clone Wars content in the future and focus on some of the other clone commanders who didn't quite get the spotlight like Captain Rex or Clone Commander Cody did. And let's be honest here, even Clone Commander Cody started not being in the Clone Wars as much as he probably should have been like Rex was. And don't get me wrong, I love Rex. It's just, there's a lot of other awesome clone commanders throughout the Grand Army of the Republic that just quite didn't get enough attention in my opinion, but there's always room for more of that in the future. And last but not least, they revealed one role play item for us today, which was an item previously pipelined, and that is Moff Gideon's Phase 4 Dark Trooper Mandalorian helmet seen in season three of The Mandalorian. And that helmet looks really, really killer. I am so excited 
to get Moff Gideon's helmet, but not only are we getting his helmet, and not only will it feature electronics like a lot of the other Black Series roleplay helmets, but the visor lights up red. Oh, that looks so, so cool. It looks so cool, and I'm so excited for that. So really, really awesome pieces up for pre-order from the most latest live stream and some really cool pipelines to get excited about in the future. I'm definitely looking forward to the next fan stream to see what's going to be revealed there and what's going to be pipelined for in the future. But one thing's for sure, I'm definitely excited and I hope you guys are too. Don't forget to get your pre-orders in on Hasbro Pulse or your other favorite retailer in before they are gone and stay tuned for upcoming pre-orders for some awesome black series vc and roleplay items from hasbro in the future and don't forget they're going to be announcing the next vc has lab sometime around may 4th not exactly on may 4th but sometime during the week of may 4th they specifically said you best and of course, you know, I'll be looking, watching, and excited along with the rest of you for whatever that's going to be because we've already had some really awesome Haslabs for the Vintage Collection, including the Barge, the Razor Crest, and now the Ghost. So what's going to go up there with those three awesome vehicles? Well, stay tuned and find out with the rest of us whenever they announce that fan stream. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's reaction video covering the most recent Star Wars fan stream from our friends over at Hasbro. What did you think about the announcements? Were you pretty excited about the figures that got announced today? Or were you hoping some other figures would get announced today? I know there was other stuff I was looking forward to as well, but we got some really cool figures announced today, and hopefully we'll have some even more really cool figures announced in the near future. Like and subscribe and follow us on social media. Make sure you check out the rebelscum.com main website daily for toy news like this video right here. And of course, for when those pre-orders are going live, because you know we'll be announcing that as well. And stay tuned for all of our other awesome content, including the upcoming Rebel Scum Con, June 27th through the 30th this summer at the Allen Convention Center in the Dallas area. For more information, go to Rebel Scum Conventions with an S dot com. That's Rebel Scum Conventions dot com to check out all things rebel scum con 2024 or maybe even future rebel scum cons after that be sure to also check out our sister website cooltoyreview.com for all kinds of awesome daily non star wars toy news reviews and other content make sure you like and subscribe to the cool toy review and bay 12 youtube channels for that awesome toy review content and if you're looking for some star wars toys collectibles and other merch Check out Order 66 Toys. They're the world's first official all-collectible Star Wars toy store located in Order 66 Multiverse and they shops at Willowbend Mall in Plano, Texas. Or, in case you're not local, they go live every Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Order 66 Toys Facebook page and they ship all around the world. And last but not least, don't forget to check out CollectorsOracle.com, our free archival website where you can mark things in your collection, mark things you'd like to have in your collection, Share those lists with friends, family, and social media alike, and it's all absolutely free to use. We'll see you guys later. We'll see you another time. May the force be with all of you, you rebel scum.